The History of Deanna Troy Deanna Troy was a half-Beta Z, half-human Starfleet officer under the command of Captain Jean-Luc Picard. She served as ship's counselor on board the USS Enterprise D and the USS Enterprise E. In 2379, Troy transferred to the USS Titan. As a half-Beta Z, Troy was capable of extrasensory empathy, but was incapable of reading aliens with brain structures dissimilar to humans and other Beta Zs, such as the brain and the Ferengi. Like most Beta Zs, Troy had telepathic abilities. Due to her half-human heritage, however, the range of her telepathic abilities was limited compared to full-blood Beta Zs, and she could usually only read the thoughts of other Beta Zeds, most notably her mother. Troy's empathic skills made her an important asset to the Enterprise D, and her abilities were often particularly useful when dealing with hostile races. Since she could usually determine through the use of her abilities when others are lying, she repeatedly proved herself invaluable in many suspenseful situations. Early Life and Career Deanna was born on March 29, 2336, near Lake Elnar on Beta Zed. She was born to Beta Zed Ambassador Laxwana Troy and Human Starfleet Officer Ian Andrew Troy. Deanna was actually the second of the two children, the first Kestra Troy, born in 2330. However, Kestra drowned when Deanna was an infant. Stricken with grief and regret, Laxwana removed all evidence of Kestra's existence from her own life and even repressed all memories of Kestra. She also made her husband swear never to mention Kestra again. Because of this, Deanna did not learn of her sister until 2370 when Laxwana's memories resurfaced. As required by Beta Z custom, Deanna was genetically bonded with a human male named Matt Wyatt Miller at a young age. Wyatt was the son of Stephen and Victoria Miller, close friends of Deanna's parents. Due to their genetic bonding, Deanna was scheduled to marry Wyatt in adulthood. According to her mother, Deanna had a talent for language as a child. During her adult life, Deanna also recalled having visited the Enterprise NX-01 as a little girl. Although she was not absolutely sure, as she always got those museum ships mixed up. As a child living on Beta Z, Deanna learned the aspects of human culture from her human father, Ian. One such aspect was a fondness for stories set during the Earth's ancient West, which he would often read to her. To fall asleep, she would ask him to sing the American song Down in the Valley. While this was her favorite, it was his singing that made her feel safe. As she was half human and half Beta Z, she never felt trapped between the two worlds in which she belonged, instead choosing to embrace the richness of her dual heritage. She also heard stories from her maternal grandfather, who told them telepathically. Something of a traditionalist, he rarely spoke, saying speech was for the off-worlders and people who didn't know any better. In a cut scene from the episode Cost of Living, would have established that Deanna frequently felt as if she was the parent and Laxwana was the child. In one instance, in 2342, during a party celebrating Deanna's sixth birthday, Laxwana disappeared halfway through the celebration, but returned later dressed as a Coropanian princess and carried in a cedar chair by four men, much to Deanna's embarrassment. Deanna's father died in 2343 when Deanna was only seven years old. Even so, she remembers him fondly, and when she became pregnant by an alien being in 2365, she named the child after her father. In grammar school, Deanna had to memorize Jonathan Archer's speech at the Federation founding ceremony. Deanna had been studying psychology at the University of Beta Z sometime in the 2350s. During her time there, one of her patients, Tam Elbram, a Beta Z male who had been suffering from mental instability due to his lack of Beta Zoid's natural ability to tune out the thoughts of others. Deanna Troy entered Starfleet Academy in 2355. 
She graduated in 2359, majoring in psychology. On her homeworld at Beta Z, she met William T. Riker, a Starfleet lieutenant who was stationed on the planet. The two began a relationship sometime between 2357 and 2361, and the relationship lasted several years. After Riker was assigned to the USS Potemkin, the two planned to spend their holidays together on Ryza in 2361. However, Will had to cancel their plans after he was quickly promoted to lieutenant commander. Deciding to make his career his top priority, Will stopped pursuing Deanna, and the couple eventually lost contact with each other. By 2364, Troy held the rank of lieutenant commander. Later that year, she was assigned as ship's counselor on board the Enterprise D. Troy had to prove herself to be an important asset to the crew of the Enterprise D during the ship's first mission to Far Point Station in 2364. Her abilities to sense feelings and emotions yielded vital clues which allowed the crew to determine that the station was actually a shape-shifting spaceborne entity being forced into servitude by the Bandai. By rescuing the creature and returning it with its mate, Troy and her shipmates managed to pass a test of humanity's intentions imposed on them by Q. Upon first contact with the Ferengi species in 2364, Troy reported that she could discern neither thoughts nor emotions from them, that they could shield those from others. She later mentioned, however, that she could sense one of the Ferengis was hiding something. Troy was also unable to detect any feelings from the Traveler, when he was encountered by the Enterprise crew in the same year. Later that year, Troy was returning from a conference when her shuttle suffered a sudden instrument malfunction and subsequently crashed on Vagra 2. There, a lonely but sadistic entity that referred to itself as Artemis held Troy prisoner by surrounding the shuttle with a force field and prevented her crewmates from rescuing her, even going as far as to kill Lieutenant Yar. Troy and her shuttle pilot, Lieutenant Ben Bredo, were eventually rescued after Wesley Crusher and Worf discovered that the field weakened when Artemis was provoked, due in part to Troy's intelligence regarding Artemis' emotional state and psychology. In early 2365, Troy became pregnant with an alien who wished to experience human feelings and relationships. He grew at an accelerated rate and within hours was an eight-year-old boy. At the same time, a plasma plague struck the ship and threatened to kill everyone within hours. The alien realized that he was the source of the plague and sacrificed his human life to save the ship, referring to his alien form and then leaving the craft. Troy experienced both the joy of childbirth and the heartbreak of losing a child in the same day. 2366 to 2367. Troy thereafter met her former patient, Tam Elbram, again when he was being transported to the Enterprise on an ultimately successful mission in which Elbram made first contact and subsequently remained with an alien life form that looked like an organic spaceship called the Ten Man. Troy also became the object of affection from a new crew member named Reginald Barkley. He was too shy to approach her, so he created a hologram to interact with her. Troy canceled him and he eventually ended the program. Later, while attending a trade conference on Betazoid, Deanna along with Loxwana and Riker were captured by Ferengi, who wanted to use Loxwana's telepathic abilities to give them an advantage in negotiations. They used mind probes on Deanna and Loxwana, but Riker was able to send a message to the Enterprise communicating the location of the Ferengi ship, and they were rescued. Troy temporarily lost her powers when she came in contact with two-dimensional life forms that had caught the Enterprise in their magnetic force. They were heading for a cosmic string which would destroy the Enterprise. Picard asked her to use her human abilities to try to determine the alien's intentions. As he pointed out, her degrees in psychology were not tied to her powers, and she was still the most qualified person on the ship for the task. Troy determined that the Cosmic String was their home, the Enterprise was able to break free, and after the aliens left, her powers returned. 
2368 to 2369. Deanna Troy took command of the Enterprise after it was hit by a quantum filament that caused major damage and trapped the officers in various parts of the ship. She decided not to separate the saucer from the engineering and to divert power to engineering, a decision that ended up saving the ship. During a visit by telepathic aliens, Troy was attacked and lapsed into a coma. On waking, she believed that she had been attacked by Riker. She ultimately discovered, though, that one of the aliens who had participated in the attack had been using his telepathic powers to make her think the attacker had been someone other than himself. In 2369, Troy met Vess Alcar, a Federation mediator who routinely transferred telepathically his dark thoughts and emotions to other hosts so that his mind was clear and able to mediate conflicts more effectively. After Alcar's previous receptacle expired, Troy was tricked by him to performing the funeral meditation, which established a link, deliberate on Alcar's part, between them. The effect of this transfer caused Troy to act aggressively, and due to the fact that she was non-Lumeran, to experience rapid aging faster than his previous victims. With Alcar refusing to release Troy, Dr. Crusher induced death-like symptoms to trick Alcar into severing the length by trying to take another female Lumeran as his receptacle, at which point Troy was revived by Crusher and the Enterprise crew thwarted Alcar. Later in 2369, Troy was kidnapped and surgically altered by the Romulan underground movement. She was forced to assume the role of Major Raquel, an operative for the Tal Shiar on board the Kazara. While there, Troy befriended Subcommander Navek, who helped her to adopt her role and also receive the true nature of her mission to help Vice Proconsulate Imrek and the two of his aides defect to the Federation. Troy discovered that she wielded much power over the crew of the Kazara, as many people were frightened of the Tel Shiar. However, she had a conflicted relationship with the Kazara's commanding officer, Commander Torelth. When Troy's mission took a turn for the worse, and a fight with the Enterprise seemed imminent, Deanna seized command of the Kazara. She managed to successfully complete her mission by concealing a transporter beam inside a low-level disruptor blast. Navek was killed by the Kazara's helmsman after Torith retook command, and the Enterprise barely managed to beam Deanna back on board before the Kazara fled under cloak. At the end of the year, Troy, together with Picard and LaForge, was captured and imprisoned by Lor, who planned to lead a group of individualized Borg drones to destroy the Federation, and had brainwashed Data into helping him. Troy and her inmates stole a receiver that they used to restore Data's ethics. The prisoners were finally rescued by Hugh, Data, and the Enterprise. In the year 2371, Troy piloted the Enterprise D on the orders of Commander Riker during the Battle of Meridian III. And when the ship's primary hull, much to her and her shipmates' distress, subsequently crash landed on Meridian III, she was the last person to pilot the ship, as the engineering section had been destroyed due to the warp core breach, and the saucer section could not be salvaged. The Enterprise E. In 2372, Troy transferred to the Sovereign class USS Enterprise E with most of the senior staff from the Enterprise D. She continued the occasional role of bridge commander as part of her daily duty shifts while she was posted to the Enterprise E. In 2373, Troy and her crewmates disobeyed Starfleet orders by taking part in the Battle of Sector 001. The Enterprise was instrumental in the destruction of the Borg Cube, but pursued a remaining Borg Sphere back in time to 2063, subsequently destroying the Borg craft before it could prevent the historic first flight of Zephyrin Cochran's Phoenix warpship. After the Borg attack, two teams of officers beamed to the surface of Earth, Troy serving as a member of the second team. She searched for Zephyrin Cochran on the planet and accepted the civilian's offer of drinks in return for information. After three shots of tequila, Troy, having become extremely intoxicated, discovered that the civilian was actually Zephyrin Cochran himself. After she and the Endeavor were found in a bar by Riker, Troy continued to share a drink with the extremely strong tequila with Cochran, who she occasionally reported was nuts. 
before losing consciousness due to her large consumption of alcohol. After she came to, Troy helped convince Cochran of the importance of his first warp flight, which he was considering canceling following the Borg attack. Troy later supervised the launch of the Phoenix from Earth, Cochran blasting the song Magic Carpet Ride in her ear a few seconds before the launch. By overseeing the launch, she assisted in preserving what followed the historic first flight, first contact between humans and Vulcans. Two years later, in 2375, Troy helped Captain Picard prepare a host reception for the visiting Evoca representatives after having read a Starfleet report on their species and later attended a ceremony with Picard, Riker, and Crusher. Later, Troy alone downloaded all Starfleet records on the Sona and studied them with Riker. She was also in command of the bridge just before the Enterprise E arrived at the Briar Patch upon encountering members of the Baku, whom the Sona had been observing until recently. Troy used her empathic abilities to sense that several Baku children were present and incredible mental discipline and clarity of perception. After it was learned that the Sona were attempting to discreetly relocate the Baku from their planet, Troy helped evacuate the Baku from their village to the safety of a mountain range. She also helped eliminate the Sona drones, but after Picard and a Baku woman became trapped in the following cave-in, her plan to cut away rock using phasers were discarded, as it was thought to be too dangerous. Once the two were released, Troy stayed with the refugees as most of the other senior staff left to successfully prevent the Sona from relocating the Baku, who were actually their own distant relations. In 2379, Troy made her final voyage on board the Enterprise as the ship journeyed to Romulan space on a diplomatic mission in which she and her crewmates met the new Riemann Praetor Shinzon. On board the Enterprise, Troy was telepathically violated by Shinzon, who seemed obsessed by her. She used her residual length to her advantage, however, during the battle in the Basin Riff. After the Enterprise was nearly disabled, Troy took the helm and, under Captain Picard's orders, crashed the ship into Riemann's warbird, the Scimitar, further disabling the craft. Troy was later saddened to learn that the fatalities of the battle had included not only Shinzon, but also Data. She subsequently joined the USS Titan under Captain Riker's command and was due to return to Romulus on the other diplomatic missions. In 2379, Deanna married Will Riker. The first ceremony was a traditional Earth wedding where Captain Picard served as Will's best man. After that ceremony, a traditional Betazoid wedding ceremony was to take place on Beta Z. However, the Enterprise E journey back to Beta Z was interrupted by the discovery of B4 and the mission to Romulus. Thank you for watching the history of Deanna Troy. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you can if you already did. Thank you, and have a great day. Bye-bye.